Hello, everyone. Uh, I would like to welcome you all to our sixth and final webinar in our Water Productivity Masterclass Series. My name is Lauren Zielinski. I am part of the Water PIP team from IHE Delft, and I am joined by Abraham Abishak, also part of the project team from Meta Meta, and we will be moderating this webinar today. Uh, we're very excited to see everyone here, and if you could introduce yourselves in the chat box, we would really appreciate it. So you can put your name, the organization you're working with, and the country that you're from, and it helps us understand who our audience is today. So if this is your first webinar, I would like to tell you that the webinar series is brought to you by the Water PIP Project, which is funded by the Dutch Ministry of Foreign Affairs. And it brings together different organizations that focus on water science and water management for the purpose of improving water productivity in the agricultural sector. So most of the activities are being carried out by a group of, of three organizations. They are IHE Delft, Institute for Water Education, Wageningen University and Research, and Meta Meta Communications and Research. So we're very happy to have you all join us today. And if you are a returning attendee, welcome back. It's nice to see you. Like I said, this is our sixth and final week, so it's been quite a journey. Uh, we started in June with an introduction to water productivity and how to monitor water productivity. The next two weeks, we focused on using the WAPOR portal and the data within that portal to monitor water productivity. And then we switched to talking about a specific crop, talking about sugarcane production and concerns around water productivity. Last week, we focused on the social and economic parameters around water productivity. And finally, this week, we will be learning about AquaCrop and how we can use that software to also monitor different parameters around water productivity. If you would like to rewatch the recording from today or download the presentations or do so for any of the previous webinars, you can go to the project website at waterpip.un-ihe.org or you can go to thewaterchannel.tv. So both of those websites will have the videos, and then the project website, you can also download the presentations and find additional information. The project is also on social media. So if you are on Twitter and would like to follow us, our handle is at waterpipproject. There we put out notifications on new events and new publications or project reports. Uh, that we put out as part of the project. And we're also on YouTube, so you can subscribe to our channel on Water Pip Project. And there you can find all the videos from the webinar series. And in the future, as we have more uh, events, you can find the videos there as well. So the agenda for today, will uh, we will have presentations from our colleagues at Wageningen. University and Research. So first, we will have Maria Cristoforido, and she will talk about the agronomic aspects of water productivity, and then followed by a simulation uh, of the AquaCrop software. And after that, she will introduce a case study that we've been working on in Kenya. And then that will be followed by Gerardo van Halsema, uh, Associate Professor at Wageningen. And he will talk about a diagnostic analysis of that case study in Kenya, and then also talk about a comparison between AquaCrop and the WAPOR results as part of this, this effort. And as always, after the presentations, we will have a Q&A session that will be moderated by myself and Abraham. So we will not pause in between the presentations, but if you have a comment or a question, we encourage you to put it into the chat box. And while the presentations are happening, Abraham and I will be collecting the questions. And then during the Q&A session, we'll put them on the screen and present them to our panel for a discussion. So with that, I think we're ready uh, for Maria to begin her presentation. And thank you all for joining us. Uh, thank you, Lauren. Uh, thank you for your introduction of uh, today's webinar. So I'm Maria, I'm working in the Water Pip uh, project uh, as a research assistant uh, with Wageningen uh, University. And today I'm going to talk about uh, how AquaCrop software works and uh, how it can be used to, to do a diagnostic uh, analysis and understand the reasons behind low or high values of water productivity. So uh, at the beginning, uh, 
Firstly, I'm going to talk about these agronomic aspects that uh, influence water productivity, such as field management, water stresses, and other so forms of stress. Then I'm going to present to you how, how aquacrop works and the simulation steps that it uses. Uh, and then I'm going to introduce the Cropman case, case study and the methodology that we used. And then uh, Geraldo is going to discuss uh, more in detail the diagnostic of each farm that we simulated and present uh, the aqua crop vapor uh, comparison uh, of the results. So um, we have seen in the previous webinars that water productivity is about the kilograms of biomass and kilograms of uh, yield uh, over the total uh, amount of water that is evapotranspired, the water that is consumed. However, in turn, this, this, the biomass and the yield is, uh, is, it depends on the physiological uh, processes of crop growth that affect transpiration, biomass, and uh, the determination of the harvest index. The harvest index is uh, defined as the percentage of the harvestable biomass against the total biomass production, uh, which, of course, defines the obtained yield that uh, we have in the field. Uh, these three aspects, the transpiration, the biomass, and the harvesting index, are also dependent on agronomic field factors, such as water stress, temperature stress, field management practices, soil fertility, and soil salinity stress. For example, when, when there is severe water stress, uh, transpiration cannot take place, and thus uh, biomass is not produced. Uh, in turn, depending on the timing and the, durest, and the duration of this uh, water stress, the harvest index can be either positively or negatively affected, and affects also the yield. Uh, additionally, we know that uh, the initial soil water content uh, is very important for the germination of the seed, and uh, possible uh, shortages of water during these first days of uh, crop growth uh, can cause the complete uh, die of uh, the plants. Lastly, choosing a correct variety and appropriate variety depending on the climate is very important because uh, it, it is not logical to use a variety with long uh, growth cycle under uh, rain fed conditions and dry dry climates so overall all these uh, agronomic factors affect the physiological processes of transpiration biomass and the determination of harvest index and thus also affect water productivity for this reason, in order to understand the reasons behind low or high uh, water productivity values and direct uh, our interventions in meaningful uh, ways, we, we should understand and analyze the influence that these uh, agronomic factors have. Uh, so AquaCrop uh, provides an easy-to-use software that considers all these uh, factors that I mentioned before. AquaCrop was developed by FAO and is a plant growth model that simulates transpiration, biomass, and yield with a relatively limited number of inputs required. It gives uh, a day-by-day -day water balance in a sort of a vertical transect that studies the interactions between the soil, the, the plant, and the atmosphere, the climate, as you can see uh, in this uh, graph. Aquacrop also separates the evaporation from the transpiration part of ET, uh, and thus it, pays, it calculates biomass based on transpiration, and thus the beneficially used part of evapotranspiration. Um, aqua, aquacrop can be used in uh, herbaceous crops, such as barley, cotton, maize, or wheat, and is uh, freely available uh, in the link that I, I have put in the bottom of this slide. So uh, let's uh, have a look at uh, the steps that AquaCrop follows in order to do the stimulations. Uh, firstly, the green canopy cover is simulated as a percentage uh, of the soil surface that is covered by the canopy. 
in general, canopy development uh, is characterized by four gro growth stages, the emergence, the maximum canopy cover, the senescence, and the maturity. The green canopy development also depends, depends on two, two different aspects. Uh, the first one concerns the physiological properties of uh, specific crops, uh, so of the specific crops, such as uh, the type of the crop and the variety, as well as the climatic and management conditions, which uh, involve the stresses, the water stress, the temperature stress, soil salinity, and soil and soil fertility stress. Based on these aspects, AquaCrop simulates the actual uh, canopy cover development, uh, as well as the optimal green canopy cover development that would have taken place uh, in, in, in the absence of uh, water stresses or all the different uh, stresses. In this sense, AquaCrop can also provide insights uh, in terms of production and productivity gaps. In the second step, the transpiration is uh, simulated. As we see in this uh, brief uh, flow diagram, uh, canopy cover is also used in order to, to simulate transpiration. Um, transpiration is also affected by severe water stress. As I mentioned before, uh, severe water stress or aeration stress due to uh, excess water can uh, cause stomatal closure and thus uh, reduce transpiration. Additionally, transpiration is affected by soil, soil salinity and cold stress. Uh, moving to the third step that AquaCrop uh, uses is, is the simulation of the biomass. Um, as I said uh, before, AquaCrop calculates biomass production based on transpiration. Uh, and thus the, the productive portion of evapotranspiration. Biomass is uh, proportional to the cumulative amount of uh, water transpired. So the more transpiration, the more biomass production. Uh, and thus there is a, a linear relationship between those two aspects. AquaCorp uses this, this aspect to, to calculate the biomass water pro productivity star. Uh, which is normalized for the climate and the CO2 concentration. As we see in this, uh, in this graph, the biomass water productivity star has a, a different range of values between C3 and C4 crops. So aqua crop also distinguishes between the photosynthetic capacities of different types of crops. Uh, soil fertility stress affects also this uh, photosynthetic capacity of the crop and thus the biomass production uh, in total. Uh, this can also be seen in the equation that uh, is just below the, the graph, uh, as soil fertility refers to this KC factor. Uh, the fourth step of uh, aqua crop simulation is simulating the, the yield. Uh, which is based on the harvest index. Uh, so the the harvest index uh, depends on two can can be changed based on two different uh, parameters. Let's say the first one refers to adjustments that uh, take place due to cultivar specific uh, uh, requirements and uh, are taking place, for example, when we have a failure of pollination or insufficient uh, green canopy cover uh, that results in, in that the crop cannot reach the, the maturity level. The second set uh, refers to water stress, uh, severe or mild, that can have either positive or negative effect uh, on the harvest index. As we can see in the picture, uh, stresses before the reproductive phase uh, and mild stresses during the yield formation can increase harvest index, while more severe water stress during yield formation decrease uh, the harvest index. So uh, having said that, uh, having understood uh, a bit the background of how aquacrop works, uh, I will introduce the, the case study, the Cropmon case study, 
that we apply the aqua crop simulation model. Our analysis uh, was about two commercial uh, wheat farms and three subsistence uh, maize farms uh, in uh, Kenya. And, uh, and our, our calculations were based on uh, the field visit and master's thesis research of Michiel Kusters of uh, 2019. Uh, so uh, in order for Aquacrop to assess the climatic and management uh, stresses, we need to have certain input files uh, that we use for the initial uh, simulation. Uh, so as a first step, we inputted a climate file with temperature and uh, rainfall data that were obtained from the field from meteorological uh, stations uh, next to our uh, farms uh, from TAHMO organization. Then regarding the specific crop characteristics, we inserted the planting date and the planting plant density uh, based on field data. Uh, regarding the rooting depth, we, we, we assumed based on the literature a uh, rooting depth of uh, 1 meter for wheat farms and 0 0.9 meter for uh, maize farms. Uh, lastly, regarding the specific gro crop growth stages, we used the um, default aqua crop values for wheat and maize. Uh, that define the time that it takes for the crop to reach the next uh, stage. Uh, in the next uh, step, we, we, we had the management file, and since all farms were rain-fed, uh, we didn't include any irrigation uh, schedule or uh, irrigation uh, inputs. Uh, in this in this file, we also inserted uh, the soil. For, we assumed some soil fertility stress, and uh, for for the wheat farms, uh, since they are commercial, we assumed a, a relatively good uh, soil fertility. So we assumed a stress of 15% uh, soil fertility stress and 10% of wheat infestation, while in the subsistence. Um, farms, uh, maize farms, we assumed a level of soil fertility of 40% and 15% of weed infestation. Uh, as I will discuss later, we, we used this parameter to validate uh, the results of aqua crop with the field data. Uh, lastly, in the soil file, we added the soil type based on soil classification maps. Uh, and since the rooting depth of wheat and, and maize is relatively small, uh, we assume no interaction with the groundwater table. Uh, so uh, after the initial run with the previously measured parameters, we validate aqua crops results based on a canopy cover uh, field data of uh, 10 meter resolution and the reported yields from farmers' interviews. Uh, the parameters that we mostly used in order to validate was the soil fertility and weed infestation. And for the initial soil water content, we assumed that uh, soil water at the beginning of the planting date uh, was at field capacity, and thus uh, it was enough water was in the root zone to to avoid water stresses uh, during this initial period. Uh, regarding the, the crop growth uh, stages, um, we, we, we had to adjust slightly the date of maturity uh, so that we have a better fitting between the observed, the, the, the reported yields, and the simulated yields. Uh, and as you will see now following, Geraldo is going to discuss more in detail how, how, uh, how we did the simulations and the diagnosis for this farm. So I give the floor to Geraldo. Thank you, Maria. Um, yeah, I will just uh, take you uh, along the uh, the farms that we've been simulating in uh, in Kenya first uh, to start with the uh, commercial wheat farms 
rain-fed conditions. And as I said, we have two sets of, uh, of field data that we can use to validate uh, the simulation of, uh, of aqua crop. And as you see in here in this graph, let me see that. My pointer works. Does it work? Yeah. Uh, okay, because I, I can't see it myself. But so here you see these uh, these black dots, and those are basically the uh, the canopy cover data uh, that we obtained through the NEO uh, satellite uh, uh, images over the growing season. So that gives an idea. Okay, how did the canopy develop in this field during the growing uh, uh, season? The other uh, set of data that we have to validate is the uh, reported yield by the farmer. That's, so in this case, the 3.34 uh, uh, tons. Uh, and uh, as Maria explained, uh, we have a given climate. We have the soil uh, uh, data that we put uh, as an input. And then we can play with uh, either the soil fertility or the wheat inf uh, infestation to try to come up with the best match uh, uh, based on the canopy uh, uh, cover that, uh, data that we have and uh, the reported uh, yield. And we're not touching yet the internal uh, uh, crop uh, specific parameters that define the growth stages, because basically we don't have uh, detailed enough information uh, uh, to do that. But in this case, what we see, and here you see the result, uh, is uh, if we uh, uh, set a soil fertility stress of 25% and a weed infestation of 10%, we get a reasonable uh, uh, result, uh, the uh, observed uh, yield or the simulated yield is very close to the observed uh, yield, and we are fairly uh, okay. It's not perfect, but it's a reasonable uh, simulation of uh, of the canopy cover. So the uh, the simulation in aqua crop seems to work quite uh, quite nicely, uh, and what it does enable is to look at uh, how does the growing environment uh, perform uh, over the growing season. And over here, <coughs> you see uh, a lot of information. Basically, on the top bar, you see uh, how much transpiration has occurred during the season. And as long as it is blue, uh, uh, it basically says uh, uh, you meet, uh, the crop can transpire the amount that is uh, required. And here, towards the end of the season, we see that the blue bars do not match the potential bar, uh, and basically we're facing a condition of uh, quite severe water stress leading to stomata closure. And that is, we can see immediately here in the graph underneath, which is basically uh, an indication of how much water is available in the soil, in the root zone, and here towards the end of the growing season, uh, uh, we are below the red line, threshold line for stomata closure, uh, and we have quite some severe uh, uh, water stress, um, which is uh, indicated above. Uh, it shows that we have uh, uh, too little uh, uh, transpiration going on. Looking at a canopy cover, uh, uh, immediately we see that we stay below from quite from the beginning uh, uh, from the season, we, we stay below the potential. Uh, and that has to do with two uh, factors. It has to do with the fertility stress that we impose. So we have, in this case, uh, 20, uh, uh, 25, 15 uh, uh, percent fertility stress. Uh, but also, uh, during uh, the early stages of the, uh, of the growing season, we see that the water level drops below the green threshold line, what we call the mild water stress. That is basically the, uh, the crop is losing uh, uh, its, uh, its turgor pressure. It does not have enough force to really uh, expand its canopy development. And in aqua crop, that's defined as the canopy expansion stress. So that is another water stress limitation on the growth of, uh, uh, of the crop. 
And so basically, we're saying quite, uh, uh, we see that throughout the season, the canopy cover stays uh, substantially below the, uh, the potential canopy cover. Uh, and that will have an effect in terms of uh, the biomass uh, that is being produced and uh, the, the yield uh, that is uh, produced. So we have a biomass production of only, in this case, of 7.9 tons per hectare and a yield of 3.45 tons uh, per hectare. And we can see that different stresses are, uh, are, uh, are playing a role in here. So it's the fertility stress that affects the amount of canopy that can be developed. And developed. We have in the early uh, uh, stage of the season, we have actually uh, too much water, too much rainfall, which is leading to a little bit of uh, aeration uh, uh, stress. Then uh, going into uh, the canopy uh, expansion or the emergence, uh, we have mild water stress, uh, which restricts our canopy development, and later on in the, in the growing season, uh, just uh, as the flowering season is starting, we basically have, uh, coming to an end, we have a uh, severe water stress, uh, which is leading to stomata closure. So it's a, a combination of, of, of stresses that all accumulate uh, and have their effect in terms of the total biomass that is being produced, but also so on, uh, on the harvest. <coughs> and in this case, <coughs> what we see is that the uh, harvest index, uh, uh, which was potentially 48%, uh, is the default uh, value that is set, uh, is adjusted to be 43.6%, uh, 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 which is mainly due to the severe water stress that we see occurring uh, from, uh, from flowering. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, and later. It also provides us uh, a bit with an opportunity, so looking at uh, what could you do in such a condition, uh, in such a case. And basically, uh, what are the management options for a farmer in these uh, conditions, which are uh, rain fed? Um, most obvious is, of course, uh, to eliminate the fertility stress. So what will happen if uh, we would be able to provide enough uh, uh, fertility to this crop uh, would that how have helped uh, and well seemingly yes because uh, according to uh, the aqua crop simulation we will get a, a higher uh, 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 yield uh, uh, from 3.4 to 4.3 uh, uh, tons per hectare uh, but it is not as much as we would potentially uh, anticipate, and that is basically because we still face that uh, uh, water shortage, uh, uh, that shortage in rainfall during the second half of, uh, uh, of, the, uh, of the cropping season. And in effect, the water uh, stress becomes more severe under no fertility stress than under, in the case, with fertility stress. And that is because uh, uh, it's just the other way around. Uh, so here the water stress is severer uh, without fertility stress than with uh, fertility stress. And why is that? Because in this case, now with no fertility stress, we can immediately see we have a full canopy development in the early stage of uh, the crop season. But we are basically consuming more of the water stored in our soil at an earlier stage of our growing season. So providing fertilizer in this case has some effect, uh, uh, and it will have a measurable effect in uh, increasing uh, the yield. But it will not increase it as much as uh, you would hope for, uh, simply because uh, we don't have enough water uh, left during the second half of the growing season to uh, uh, to provide a, a, a higher uh, production. Uh, we see similar situations happening in the other farm, uh, uh, the wheat farm. And I think here we are more happy and uh, exactly uh, uh, simulated uh, in, the, in the same manner. 
So again, we have the, uh, the canopy cover data throughout the growing season that we used, and we have a, uh, a yield uh, uh, that has been uh, reported. And in this case, we were able uh, to get a bet, uh, much better match between uh, uh, the canopy uh, simulated and the canopy that we have observed with the satellite images. Uh, so we're uh, quite confident that the default settings for the wheat crop as they are provided in aqua crop, uh, where they define the growing stages uh, in growing degree days, um, uh, is working uh, uh, quite well for this case of the wheat farms in, uh, uh, in Kenya. So basically, we are validating that, uh, that basic uh, uh, crop file uh, for, for wheat in, uh, in this case. And also here, uh, you see the uh, similar uh, uh, situation as in the, uh, in the previous uh, uh, wheat farm. Uh, we have uh, uh, a small, a limited uh, reduction in the canopy because of our uh, fertility stress. Uh, uh, but uh, as the season, uh, uh, now then we have uh, some mild water stress in the beginning of the emergence stages, uh, which uh, reduces uh, the canopy uh, development. And later on, we have some severe water stress, uh, which is really uh, reducing, again, the, uh, the transpiration. So different stresses occurring uh, at different stages over the, uh, uh, the growing season, all having their effect on biomass, on transpiration, but also on uh, the yield. Um, and in this case, uh, we have, uh, again, due to water stress, we have a mild uh, effect on uh, uh, reducing the harvest index which is by default set at 48% in the aqua crop settings. But because of uh, water stress, we have a reduction of the harvest index to about 46%, uh, percent, which is uh, uh, mild. Uh, uh, the other reduction is basically just that we have uh, not enough uh, 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 biomass uh, produced to prov uh, provide a higher uh, yield due to mild fertility stress and a quite uh, pronounced uh, uh, water stress. What we like with, uh, 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 with the application and what we show with the, uh, the second farm is that the uh, default crop settings for, for the wheat, uh, in this case, seem to work uh, well. As we'll see now, when we're looking into the maize fields, we're coming to a much more difficult situation, <coughs> um, which uh, uh, we basically try to do the same approach. Uh, we have a set of, uh, of canopy cover data, which is uh, uh, very long, <coughs> uh, and there is quite a bit of, uh, of noise, which section of this canopy data is, is green. Uh, we don't know. Uh, we have a yield uh, uh, that is being reported, and we try to match it. And in this case, as Maria has uh, uh, already indicated, we said, okay, we, uh, uh, the first step we can switch, uh, uh, see with how much fertility stress uh, can we use. Uh, subsistence level, small-scale farming, we know that fertility uh, stresses occur a lot in East African uh, rain-fed conditions. So we've opted for severe uh, uh, fertility stress, in this case, up to 40%, which gives a uh, not a, uh, a very good uh, um, uh, uh, match, but a, uh, 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 the statistics are, are, are not good. Uh, the other thing that we're facing is that, uh, that we face in this simulation is that we find it was difficult with the default settings of the maize uh, crop to uh, come close 
to the observed or the reported yield of, of the farm with uh, the simulated yield. And to this end, basically what we did uh, needed to do is to change the crop settings uh, within aquacrop. And the only way we could come up with a, uh, a semblance between the simulated yield and the observed yield is by uh, extending the uh, maturity time for the crop by, in this case, 100 growing degree days. And basically now we are entering into uh, a dangerous situation from a crop simulation point of view because yeah, we're, uh, uh, we're manipulating the basic crop settings within aqua crop. And normally what you would like to do is to have, uh, do that on a proper calibration uh, where you then have detailed information exactly about the canopy uh, cover, uh, but also on the different growth stages uh, in the field so that you know, okay, now my crop is starting emergence on this day and the canopy cover is so much uh, and it starts uh, with flowering uh, on this date yeah, and the canopy cover is uh, so much and the same for uh, maturity uh, and so on. Uh, but in the absence of this detailed uh, uh, data uh, where we have a very clear link between the canopy cover, the date and what uh, uh, growing stage the crop is, uh, basically we lack the information to do a proper calibration of uh, the canopy uh, development for this crop. So we did a slight uh, uh, manipulation. So, okay, if we increase the maturity by 100 growing degree days, but basically we don't have the good field data to say that, uh, then we get uh, a reasonable return in the yield, yeah, but the simulation in terms of canopy cover is, uh, is not so good. Um, But, okay, it gives an idea uh, of what may uh, have, uh, uh, have happened. And I think here you clearly see the, the contrasting situation uh, is uh, uh, we have uh, much more water during the growing season. And actually we have extended periods uh, like uh, here uh, and here where we have too much water in the field, which reduces transpiration. And with that, also uh, some of the biomass uh, uh, production because uh, of too much uh, water in uh, in the soil. Uh, the canopy uh, is uh, uh, is reduced uh, primarily because of this severe fertility uh, stress uh, that we have uh, 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 introduced. Uh, another issue that we face in this context uh, is uh, when we look at the yield and the harvest index uh, at the situation, there is a uh, discrepancy between when the crop is mature uh, in the simulation where you say, okay, after 154 days after sowing, the crop is matured and basically ready to be harvested. Uh, um, however, in the field, uh, the farmer, the reported harvest was 243 days. So that's a substantial longer uh, uh, period. Now, also from literature and from, from, from other studies, we know that it is not uncommon in some of the conditions of East Africa for farmers to leave their maize uh, crop standing on the field after maturity to dry. Uh, and to really uh, to to dry the crop standing out in in the field, but this has risks also with regard uh, that you can lose uh, 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 some of your yield due to diseases uh, and rotting if you leave it uh, standing out too long uh, in the field to dry out. But from literature, we we know some farmers uh, uh, can leave it up to 90 days after maturity uh, in the field. 
from a simulation point of view, this complicates uh, matters uh, a little bit because the reported yield is that then uh, uh, does that include yield losses only during the growth stage? So uh, was that already uh, yield loss at maturity, or is that a yield loss that has occurred after the maturity has has reached? In the lack of detailed information. Uh, uh, this, uh, this complicates uh, uh, matters uh, a little bit. Uh, <clears throat> in this case, yeah, we have a slight uh, 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 reduction in the harvest index. And as you will see, this is not due to water stress, because basically we don't, we're not facing a lot of water stress in this condition, uh, situation. But uh, it is purely because we have extended the uh, maturity day, uh, date by 100 degree, uh, growing degree days. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, aqua crop simulation uh, indicates, it's OK, at a certain point, I don't have enough uh, green canopy uh, left uh, to produce more yield. So potentially, they would be able to produce more yield, but I just do not have enough green canopy left on my, in my crop to produce more, uh, more yield. So we have a slight reduction going from about 48% to uh, uh, 50, uh, 45%. Uh, a similar situation in, uh, in the maize, uh, in another maize uh, uh, field, again, uh, we need to assume very high levels of uh, fertility stress uh, in order to come to some reasonable amount of, uh, of a fit between the canopy uh, uh, simulated and observed and the yield. Uh, in this case, however, uh, to really come up with, uh, um, uh, with a good fit between the yields, we had to extend the maturity even more. Yeah? to uh, with uh, 500 growing degree days. And we know that the maize variety that is grown in this farm A is different than the maize variety in uh, farm uh, B. Whereas for the two wheat farms, we know that both farmers used exact same variety of wheat. Now we're dealing with, with, uh, uh, with situations of different varieties which we would expect to have slightly different settings in, uh, in their crop settings in, uh, uh, in aqua crop. So we don't have a very good uh, uh, simulation of the canopy cover, but in the absence of additional detailed information, we're not able to come to a proper calibration of the crop settings for, uh, for this case. This is what we have to, uh, 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 to deal with. So I have to be a little bit cautious with interpreting uh, the numbers and, uh, uh, and, uh, and the results. Interesting here, I think, uh, if you reflect it to the other uh, maize farm, uh, we clearly see, OK, we have, again, uh, we're dealing with the issue of fertility stress that we induce, which is reducing the amount of the canopy. Uh, uh, but we have much more uh, water scarce situation towards the end of the, uh, uh, of the season. Uh, uh, with poor rainfalls uh, occurring, so that is affecting the uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the biomass, uh, and may also affect the growth uh, uh, stages. Uh, and in addition to that, we have uh, temperature stresses where there is considerable uh, uh, cold stresses occurring during this growing season, uh, which further affect crop growth and the crop uh, transpiration and, uh, and production. Again, uh, here, so what we will see in this case is that we have a severe uh, a reduction of the harvest index to 27%. And that is basically uh, imposed by our setting. Yeah? So we have to be a little bit careful with the interpretation of, uh, of this value. It looks like a, a high value. Basically, this is imposed by how our manipulation 
of the crop setting by extending the maturity time with uh, 500 growing degree days. Uh, and yeah, in the absence of good field data, uh, we have to be uh, uh, careful with, uh, with the, these, uh, these numbers. Now we have a final uh, maize farm, uh, maize M. And here, uh, again, a third uh, variety of maize is used. We, uh, again, uh, used the, the same uh, approach. We need, had to impose uh, a fertility stress of 46% and a weed infestation of 15%. Uh, we get a much better fit uh, between the observed uh, uh, canopy data, uh, uh, also, also the statistical values are much uh, much more reasonable. Uh, 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 which is interesting because this was the oldest uh, variety of maize uh, uh, that was used. Uh, and so in this case, this, uh, we can say there is a better fit between the default aqua crop settings for, for maize and this old variety of maize that is being used in, uh, in this farm. Uh, if we want to do a proper uh, simulation for the other two farms, we would actually have to do a more uh, data intense uh, calibration. Uh, and we see that we get uh, quite a good match uh, between the simulated yield and the observed uh, yield as well for this case. Now, what are the options in here? Uh, again, we have uh, uh, quite favorable rainfalls. At times, uh, too much rainfall uh, occurring, uh, occurring uh, which leads to a reduction in transpiration. Uh, but there is uh, certainly no uh, severe water stress. We have to deal also with uh, reported pronounced period of cold stress, which reduces the growth and the, uh, uh, and, uh, and the yield. But in this case, compared to uh, where we say, uh, as we are not, not facing severe stresses during the, the second half of the, uh, of the season, in a case like this, it would pay off to fertilize uh, uh, the land, uh, because seemingly we have enough water uh, uh, during uh, uh, the remaining of, uh, of the growth season. And in this case, uh, uh, what you will see in terms of the harvest index simulation, we see that there are no severe stresses occurring in terms of water uh, that affect the harvest index. Uh, so uh, uh, the harvest index uh, remains at 48%. And the major reduction in production and yield is due to uh, fertility stress. And here we just give a, a, a slight summary and overview, and I think you can look uh, better into the details uh, uh, of these uh, of the five simulations from uh, from the PowerPoint file uh, uh, later on. Uh, but I think uh, to stress, uh, well, if we are interested in the water productivity in terms defined of the kilograms of yield per cubic meters of evapotranspiration, uh, we normally would expect a higher water productivity for, for maize than for wheat. Uh, and in this case, we basically see uh, that there is uh, no, uh, uh, no big uh, uh, difference. Uh, in fact, in some cases, the maize is uh, performing uh, lower uh, than the wheat. Uh, and that is primarily explained by uh, the soil fertility rates, uh, where the soil fertility stress in, uh, in maize is much more pronounced uh, than uh, in the cases uh, of, uh, of the wheat. Yeah. And as long as you have favorable range uh, throughout the entire growing season, uh, then uh, you could uh, 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 address those stresses uh, with, uh, with fertility management. Uh, but in the case, as in the uh, farm, uh, farm A, uh, or also in the wheat farms, you see there, where there is still 
pronounced uh, water stress uh, in the second half of uh, the growing season, then adding fertilizers uh, will only have a limited effect as you basically increase uh, the, the water stress uh, further uh, in the second half of the growing season. Well, working for the, uh, and I think the, uh, what we say uh, with this application of aqua crop, it works quite, uh, quite well and quite nicely if you can combine it with uh, uh, field data sets with reported yields and you have some indicators of canopy development uh, during the growth uh, uh, season. We're quite pleased with how the aqua crop settings for wheat work. And with maize, clearly, we have a more complicated situation. It seems to, f to work reasonably well for one variety. But if we are dealing with other varieties, clearly, uh, uh, the, the crop file settings will have to be uh, adjusted to reflect the growing uh, dynamics of those varieties better. Yeah. Uh, but to do a proper calibration of those uh, crop settings, we uh, really would need additional data uh, uh, to do that. But I think it's interesting to uh, uh, clearly shows that there is an interest to develop uh, 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 those few calibrations for different varieties of, uh, of maize. So we're working with the uh, 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 yeah, I think this is already discussed. So we're working uh, with uh, the water pay project. We're also interested to look at and see uh, we can apply the aqua crop to the uh, very different uh, or a very uh, detailed simulation of uh, the production in the field. But how does this compare with the uh, the vapor? Uh, analysis in the water uh, for uh, uh, database. So what we've done uh, for five fields or four fields uh, in this case, one field, uh, wheat farm, you see here on, uh, uh, on, on the left, 40 hectares and three maize fields of smaller scale with one to two hectares and I think the, the largest of that one is, is four hectares, hectares uh, to obtain also the uh, the vapor data for that same field, the same crop, and that same uh, 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 growing season. And how do that uh, do those data compare then with our simulation results in uh, in aqua crop? <coughs> uh, so from the vapor uh, vapor database, uh, we use the level two data because uh, that's uh, uh, to do with where these fields were situated in, uh, in Kenya. So we're dealing with a 100 meter resolution uh, geo-referenced uh, uh, pixels. Uh, we applied the, the same planting and harvested dates as in, in aqua crop to define the simulation period or the data period for, uh, for the vapor. We abstracted the seasonal uh, evapotranspiration, the net production uh, function, which is based, based uh, uh, on uh, uh, the light efficiency, which we then converted into above ground biomass uh, uh, for wheat and uh, for maize. And then VAPOR mostly applies or can be applied with the fixed harvest index to obtain uh, the yield. And uh, here, uh, in this table, uh, we see the results uh, coming to uh, uh, side by side. And first, for the wheat farm, I think it's interesting uh, uh, to look. And here, we see immediately okay, we have an issue uh, in terms of the simulated uh, evapotranspiration for aqua crop, about 330 millimeters for the growing season, whereas from WAPOR, we only at 200 millimeters, uh, 199, so considerable lower. So there is some form of discrepancy between those two uh, 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 data. 
uh, or we need to look for uh, further detail what is uh, what is happening. The same we see basically in terms of biomass. Uh, the biomass reported uh, from from vapor is uh, lower uh, uh, than the one simulated in uh, in aqua crop, uh, but given that the evapotranspiration is much lower than uh, the one in aqua crop, you will see that in terms of water productivity, there's still quite a difference uh, between vapor and, uh, uh, and aqua crop for, uh, for the wheat. Uh, when we look at the maize situation, this is becoming more uh, uh, pronounced. Uh, and it is, uh, if we look first at the ETA data, although there are small farms, much smaller farms. Uh, actually, uh, we have uh, a very good comparison between the evapotranspiration from aqua crop and vapor for all three farms. Uh, they're all uh, within the 5% uh, uh, margin. So that is uh, what we would consider as a very good uh, match between those two types uh, of, uh, of data. Well, there is a very large discrepancy uh, is between the reported biomass. Uh, where, uh, for instance, here in farm B, we have a, a simulated biomass uh, in uh, aqua crop of 14.7 uh, tons per hectare, whereas vapor uh, returns uh, a biomass production of 41 tons of biomass uh, uh, for the same field, uh, which is actually higher than the maximum potential uh, biomass uh, reported by, uh, by, uh, by aqua crop. This is uh, consistent. We see this uh, uh, very large difference in reported biomass uh, between uh, vapor and, uh, uh, and aqua crop, uh, which uh, then immediately has an effect on the reported uh, water productivities, which then provide very different numbers. Uh, uh, here, 1.12 for the aqua crop simulation, and uh, 3.13 for the for the vapor uh, uh, simulation. Uh, so I think clearly we uh, uh, this is an issue that we that we need to look further into into detail. Uh, and I think that the main issue that we're dealing with, and that we have to look more careful into into detail is uh, uh, how does uh, the vapor uh, 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 calculation and the simulation of the net production, how does that account for a, a fertility stress? Yeah. Especially as in the wheat cases, uh, we're dealing with severe fertility stress. We know that the canopy development is, uh, uh, is, uh, is affected. And it's not only the size of the canopy, it's also the, the greenness of the canopy and the uh, photosynthetic efficiency of the canopy. Well, thank you, Maria, and thank you, Gerardo. Those were really nice presentations. Uh, some of us are new to aqua crop, so it was nice to get an overview of, of how the model works and the different input parameters, and then to see it actually applied to a case study and talk about the you know specific issues that come up when you're applying uh, models in real life. And then as well, the comparison to the WAPOR data um, and uh, the work that is being done uh, in that perspective. Um, and we will also put up those uh, references and the materials for the, the aqua crop on the project website. So people who are interested to learn more about how to use the program, you can also access the links there. So now let's start with the question and answer period. We had a lot of nice questions in the chat, so we'll put them up on the screen. Uh, first question is from David. Uh, hi, Maria and Gerardo. We all know that for simulation to match with observation, good input is required. What are the variables that you think must be good to get good results? It will be effective. Uh, in, in terms of uh, aqua crop, is able to, to, to simulate it in a very dynamic way. I think we're, we're, we run into an issue now with, uh, with VAPOR where we have to look closer into how uh, uh, can VAPOR 
in the simulation of the net production function uh, uh, simulate uh, these uh, uh, fertility stresses. Because yeah? uh, if I look here at the previous numbers, these very high biomass uh, uh, production numbers derived from the net production function uh, to me indicate that these stresses are not adequately covered uh, uh, yet. So that's something that we, for the next uh, month, are going to look into into more detail to see uh, if we can address that uh, that issue uh, more, more specific. Um, yeah, this is basically we, we come here to uh, to an end of uh, uh, of the of the presentation, and hopefully uh, I can open the floor to some questions and answers uh, 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 later on. I think here uh, important to know that AquaCrop uh, is uh, is a free software available from the FAO. Uh, it put a lot of effort in uh, in developing that. There is also a lot of reference and training material uh, and, uh, 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 that you can um, uh, freely access. So here we have provided some, uh, some further references for you if you are interested to, uh, uh, to look at that uh, further. Uh, and these are some of the uh, these are the references that, that we've uh, Sounds like a lot of data is needed to run this program. Um, in the presentation. For Maria, how is soil of, uh, salinity like, uh, managed in rain-fed farming? Uh, in, in our case, we, we didn't uh, uh, include any soil salinity stresses, uh, but uh, I, I don't know, maybe Gerardo wants to, to discuss that more in general. Uh, more into, uh, facilitate the uh, discussion. Um, yeah, I, th I think that's a, that's a very good uh, good question. And I think what our simulation uh, uh, shows in here is that we, we obtained uh, uh, we need good climate data, uh, uh, daily climate data uh, from, from a weather station. In this case, we used them from the Timo the uh, uh, uh network, which is spreading out automatic uh, weather stations at, uh, at secondary schools in, uh, uh, and primary schools in, uh, in, in Kenya. So try to locate a, a, uh, a good climate uh, uh, station as close uh, by. You need a good soil uh, data, so you need to know what the, the soil uh, uh, data is, and some basic uh, 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 canopy cover uh, uh, data. As, as we showed in, the, in three out of the five cases, uh, if you can find a match between the, uh, the yield that you record and the canopy uh, over time, over calendar days, uh, 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 that it is uh, uh, from Simon. Uh, With regard to the wheat example, uh, and so then the data requirements are, are fairly uh, later on minimal. in the growth stage. Be but a also in two maize cases, uh, where we really say, okay, now we are dealing with a variety of a crop that is really uh, acting different uh, 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 than uh, as defined in aqua crop. Then you really need a much more uh, careful uh, recording of uh, uh, the canopy cover during the time of, uh, of the growth, but as well as a recording of when is my crop going from one growth stage into the other growth stage, uh, so that you can match those uh, data uh, uh, better. Yeah, I, I, uh, again, I think that's an option that uh, uh, um, AquaCrop provides uh, as an additional uh, option that you need to, uh, to deal with if you are uh, facing salinity stress. We know that it will affect uh, 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 transpiration of a crop, and it will uh, therefore also affect 
the amount of photosynthesis and the uh, amount of biomass that uh, uh, can uh, uh, can occur. Uh, uh, normal uh, in situations where we have really very pronounced uh, 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 rainfall, uh, rainy seasons, as we're dealing in uh, in Kenya, and we have a good answer. drainage uh, of um, the soil. We are still concerned is, with salinity. But if you are concerned with uh, uh, salinity, then these are issues that you need to, uh, crop uh, take into account them as an to address. Aqua crop provides you with the opportunity. Unity. If it is in rain fed, then you will have to take soil samples uh, uh, to uh, uh, to know what is the salinity levels in uh, in your soil uh, and to uh, set those parameters uh, within aquacrop. Uh, 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 yeah, it, the yeah, it probably uh, and, uh, that might have a, have an effect, but it will not have the same uh, so effect. Can you please explain as, uh, what is meant the, by water stress, uh, soil fertility stress, uh, and aeration stress? Uh, because you already have a reduced canopy size and a reduced. Uh, 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 production uh, level at the earliest stage yeah, uh, of the of the growing season, and I think the whole point, I think that is uh, that, that is uh, clear, and that is also with the uh, what we know also from uh, from practices in uh, uh, in rain-fed conditions. Uh, fertility management, and it pay, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's an expensive uh, uh, input. Uh, for 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 many farmers, uh, it only pays off uh, if you have a secured water supply later in uh, in the season. And dealing with a rain-fed condition that entails a risk, yeah? uh, and so uh, it may not always pay off completely uh, from uh, 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 from that point of view to invest in very expensive uh, uh, fertility. Uh, 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 to have a very maximum uh, a yield if you don't uh, if you're going to face uh, water stresses later on No, uh, and that is so. That is complicating uh, uh, the the factors uh, as well. So that's what I mentioned also uh, uh, by uh, in the maize, where the actual harvesting is after uh, the maturity of the crop. So there is additional time uh, where the crop is standing in the field and may be uh, of risk of having full pests and uh, and diseases. So these are not issues that can be. Uh, 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 addressed in uh, uh, in the aqua crop, yeah. so then you need field information, and then you can say, okay, I can expect because the real pest or disease, I can expect some difference. Clarifying those terms in, for everyone, uh, 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 and a question from between David. Between the simulation results, I see you have high productivity when considering uh, African field. conditions, four to six tons per hectare, which is different from data from FAO stats. Is your observation data from actual farm or from experimental fields? And how can we approach that actual yield that farmers get? I think in a, in a yeah, so subsequent in water stress, the basically, uh, there is too well. little water available for the crop uh, 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 <coughs> to, to transpire. Uh, and at that moment, uh, when there is too little water, uh, the stomata will close, uh, and biomass production will immediately uh, be uh, lower uh, and affected. Okay. Uh, and uh, well, in the case of aqua crop, we also see that mild water stress. So there is still enough water uh, for the uh, for the crop to use in terms of transpiration, 
where there is not enough water within the plant to be very rigid. Yeah? If the crop has water stress, it will become uh, more uh, less rigid, uh, which may hamper the, the rate of canopy growth, the, 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 uh, the velocity with which the leaves uh, will, uh, will grow. So fertility stress is really the, uh, uh, the lack of nutrients. Uh, so, uh, a fertilizer a application. Uh, are in, there any uh, attempts uh, to replace uh, the field? And that some directly affects the, the state of the canopy, uh, uh, and especially NDI, also the, uh, the greenness of the, of the leaves, and with that, how efficient it is in producing biomass. Uh, aeration stress are those conditions when basically there is too much water. And when there is too much uh, water in the field, so we have uh, uh, standing water on the, uh, on the field, uh, a crop will have a stress in, uh, uh, in oxygen. Uh, the roots will not be able to, uh, uh, to take up enough uh, uh, oxygen. And we see that this also results in a reduction of transpiration. Uh, and so it's, it's very similar, exact. Too much water has a similar effect as too little water. And it will, again, affect the amount of biomass uh, that can be produced at that moment. Now, so these yeah, and I think it's uh, so the uh, the files that are really uh, uh, derived from very uh, uh, from uh, from the statistics that are provided uh, to to FAO by the Kenyan government or other governments. So the, and they are. Uh, administrative averages uh, 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 reported. So the yields that we have uh, uh, used in here, and that's also what we say, uh, the observed or reported yield, are those uh, yields uh, as reported by the farmer. So, uh, and so there will be all, always be uh, uh, differences. Uh, and I think in this case, uh, for commercial settings, uh, three to four tons uh, or six tons uh, 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 are obtainable, of the study uh, um, and yeah, depending on uh, on the range uh, uh, that we have, uh, also in maize, uh, six ton is uh, is obtainable. I think this is uh, and uh, this is difficult, David, and I think we're, we're we're looking at it. Uh, and I think the the, uh, well, the NDVI that is used in 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 Vapor, uh, basically you could try to use that also as a as a canopy cover uh, uh, data, and that's basically uh, I think a similar approach has been used in our simulations for aqua crop, although we we took a a higher resolution image. Uh, 10 by 10 meters uh, uh, to uh, monitor the canopy uh, cover. Uh, uh, ET0 ET uh, values, I think this is something that we need to uh, do a comparison with, uh, uh, especially to look at, for instance, in that case of the wheat farm where we saw a discrepancy between the reported actual evapotranspiration of uh, 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 aqua crop and, uh, uh, and vapor, and I think it's worthwhile to look and do, try to do a bit more comparison. Okay, what are the the ET not files for for vapor? Uh, how do they compare to the the weather station files that we are using? 
uh, in this case. But if there is a large discrepancy in those two climate sets, then of course we will also expect uh, deviations to occur in terms of, uh, uh, of the production functions. Um, we have a question I think from the, Twitter. Uh, How do ETA, ETA, uh, uh, so basically that has data uh, that can be done with uh, the NDVI over the ETO uh, calibration I think we, uh, and the net production function. Yeah, I think yeah, that's clearly an issue question. that we need to, to look um, into yeah, more seen, detail. I mean, you saw uh, the how the net production Gerardo, function is, uh, uh, is dealing with this stress situation. Like uh, uh, so, fertility well, stress, we do see already uh, and, uh, and uh, how we can farmers. approach that in it's a different way. Farms, it's already the, the outlines of those plots and the the resolution of the images. So there's a mismatch and a challenge with the resolution of vapor and the fields of small the farmers. Yeah, I'm we're. This uh, it's I think it's, uh, uh, and when it's raining, if there's cloud uh, cover, there's a lot of missing data during those particular periods. So there's more uncertainty around the values. And then there's also a question about the multi-crop farms. Um, we already showed in the previous webinars that if we want to use VAPO, we need a lot of field data. Uh, and we can do something with like monocrops, but mixed field crops uh, is, is very challenging to make any estimations and any comparisons with the, the yield data from uh, aquaculture from the field. So those are the, the challenges in small water rain flat conditions using VAPO. So as, as we can see, there's a lot more work to be done by, by our project and by other researchers. So it's a really interesting field um, that will continue to develop in the future. So I think that was our last question. And I would like to thank the presenters, thank Maria and Gerardo, for uh, your nice information that you shared with us. And I would like to share everybody that attended and was very active in the chat. It was nice to see people asking questions and, and even answering each other in the chat, um, aside from the answers that we saw in the panel. So thank you to everyone. And as this is our last webinar in this masterclass series, I would like to thank you all for attending over the last six weeks and for engaging with us on the website as well as the Twitter accounts. And we would like to keep you guys engaged. So please remember to keep in touch with us. Um, connect with us on Twitter, follow us on Twitter and on YouTube, and stay in touch via the website. We'll be putting out publications as they get finished for different case studies um, and different information that will help you guys work through water productivity challenges that you're facing. We do have more activities that the project will be working on. We're actually working on a MOOC, a massive online open course, which uh, in the upcoming months, uh, we'll make available to people to use. Uh, so please keep in touch with, about that. We'd be interested to have you all attend that as well. And uh, we may be doing more webinar series. So in the survey that people have completed, uh, you gave us some ideas, some really nice ideas on how we can continue to engage with you guys over the upcoming months, especially since uh, we're not allowed to travel very much. So having staying connected via the internet is, is really important. So again, if you have not filled out that survey, we really appreciate it. It helps us a lot to figure out who you are and the interest that you have and how we can um, morph the project to, to help you guys with your concerns and issues. So if you have not filled out the survey, as soon as this webinar ends, it will send you directly to that link. If you already filled it out, thank you very much. We only need you to fill it out once, and then we get the information. Um, if you are new, please fill it out to help us. So again, I would like to thank you, and I would like to thank Abraham uh, from Mesa Mesa. He's really been helping us behind the scenes and setting everything up, um, as well as the other colleagues in the Water Pit Project and uh, our funders, 